Right. Um, so let's start. Uh, even though today is the first session, but usually for even for the first session, I, I still teach. Okay. So there will be contents here. And usually my first session will be introduction to the topic. And today, uh, my class, uh, my, my, my class here will be about, my course here is, is about deep learning. So what you are going to learn uh, is the deep learning in terms of the mathematical foundation and also application. Although the, the focus of this course comparing to the undergraduate um, coding in AI course offered by Ajahn and Shalisa uh, are different, right? Coding in AI focus on coding. My course here will focus on the mathematical foundation. So what you will learn here will be the math basic of the things, okay? Uh, so during the presentation, feel free to uh, add, uh, to, to, to uh, send me the questions or the comments if you have. Uh, I can handle that. So if, if, uh, you can just put it into the chat. Um, you can find the chat in the Zoom interface there. And, Right, and then I will answer when I have a chance there. All right, so let's begin. Okay, uh, we talk about AI, right? We talk about deep learning a lot lately. Why is that? You know, we find that there are the emerging technologies in IT, in the future innovation, rely much on the, the, in, the integration of the computing, computing model, computing mechanism into the technology itself, right? You have something like the generative adversarial network, which is the type of neural network, the deep learning algorithm, playing a part in the uh, hype cycle. This hype cycle indicate the, uh, the types of hype that people talk about new technologies that were coming up. You can see that the uh, blue line here, a uh, blue dot, uh, sorry, the yellow dot indicate the, uh, the technology would come in five to 10 years. And the curve indicate the hype, the expectation of the technology itself. Something like 5G is at the peak of the expectation. But the application, and the application would come out in two to five years once it's passed through the difficulty phase and the production phase, okay? So um, there are examples of technology that have passed through this curve like big data, like a smart TV that we have right now in our home. So there are a lot of, a number of uh, model, a number of computing that kind of playing parts here in this hype cycle. As you can see, the concept of transfer learning, create a network, an AI, that you can transfer the knowledge from one model to another model. You have AI, a lot of AI here, explainable AI, edge AI, AI platform as a service, and emotion AI, and many other types of AI, adaptive machine learning, even for the immersive workplace, relies on the learning of data to use the data automatically and make decisions. And that requires you to use the artificial intelligence, okay? For, for this, um, you can see that there are applications for artificial intelligence in business, in industry, in a lot of things. So what we will take a look at uh, for today would be uh, these three topics. What is artificial intelligence, particularly the deep learning? Um, the essential, oh no, we will talk, not talk about this one, but and the use case of AI in business. These, these are what we are going to take a look at. Let's first get a glimpse at the, uh, the artificial intelligence. Right? What is uh, an artificial intelligence? Right. This is an area of study that uh, we try to understand how to make computer learn and react like human, right? So this is not a new field. It starts as soon as we have the revolution of computer, right? And we have, uh, it, back then, artificial intelligence often referred to a way that we can create computer to provide reasons. But nowadays, uh, still we want computer to, to provide reason, but we want it to also imitate human. Right. My, my research period is, is actually on the speech processing and the speech size. Um, in, in, this, uh, in this research, I usually create a model to model the speech data. And I also work in data size and big, big data. 
And in, in all, all those cases, we are trying, most, mostly we will create a model that try to capture or imitate the behavior of human, right? So those kind of things is actually some part of the artificial intelligence. Right? So the will include the recognition, identification, learning, planning, problem solving. So the thing you can find in artificial intelligence is like machine learning, which you can create the model in order to learn that learn the particular patterns of data uh, that work with speech, with computer vision, that it can see and uh, detect objects, uh, can process language because language contains certain complexity. Uh, the model can process language. Um, you can have expert system that make decision, uh, do the planning, and also include the robotics there. Right? So these are the fields that are subfields in artificial intelligence. Deep learning is a part of the machine learning. Right? Although you can see that it is like a sub part of just one branch here. But right now I would say that deep learning play the parts in all of the fields in artificial intelligence. You can use deep learning to do speech recognition and speech synthesis. You must use it in computer vision, right? Right now I would say that the original, uh, traditional computer vision technique is okay for the basic one, but when you work with a uh, more difficult computer vision like object detection, like uh, object tracking. Right now, uh, mostly, uh, most of the researchers would use the deep learning to, to do the job. Um, the NLP, natural language processing, and the core me mechanisms right now is to use the deep learning as the part of that, and also for robotics and authors here. Okay, so our class will focus on this part, the subset of machine learning called deep learning, which play a part in all fields in AI, right? Um, so if you take a look at it here, uh, artificial intelligence refer to the large field to imitate human intelligence. Uh, machine learning is just a part of that, right? talking about how to make the machine learn uh, from data set, from the patterns. Why deep learning is again a subset of machine learning which focus on a particular type of neural network, but its power enables all the technique to do all the jobs. And that, that is make this great. This is just the new, um, the concept itself is not new. Neural network la, uh, has been proposed for almost 100 years already, right? But it still, it just, it has just arise uh, to become a popular technique in the past 10 years, uh, 15 years about that, uh, right? With the enable, enable of having a better way to compute, right? You have, you have GPU. Well, we have better models. Right? We have lots of data. We have a big data system uh, to enable the job here. Okay. Right. So, creating artificial intelligence uh, right now with deep learning, um, we can categorize them into uh, three types. You have like artificial narrow intelligence, which we created to do a specialized task, like recognize speech. Um, detect object and uh, detect, uh, classify the sentiment from the text. That's the narrow intelligence. Um, this, the, the theme that is like this, the goal of many researchers that they try to do right now is to create artificial intelligence that you can transfer the knowledge and the knowledge is generalized enough and the AI itself can perform general tasks like it can perform, like if, if we think about human intelligence, right, we can see, we can see, we can detect object, right? we can we only hear the word, we can distinguish the meaning. That is narrow intelligence, just specific one. But human has a certain, um, maybe because of the, of the evolution of the human cell, um, we have certain capability to perform a general pattern detection. And we have like the, the core module that uh, that is used in a lot of tasks. For example, right? For example, in in my field, speech production, there is the part of brains that control the movement of um, tongue, jaw, and an other speech apparatus. Um, we call that the motor cortex right, in, in the brain. Right? The motor cortex would control the movement here. Motor cortex also control the movement of arms of our body. Right? Motor cortex also control the movement of the 
um, of the skin of the thing that we can control uh, through muscle contraction. So that is actually the general intelligence that we are referring to here, that it can perform general tasks, can apply to many things, um, and think about the knowledge that we have, like in, in, in our mind, we can apply it. I mean, we know it from, from one thing, but we can generalize that knowledge to do another, another task. And that is the general intelligence. Uh, right now, I would say that most, most things that we have is the artificial narrow intelligence. And in, in this case, we as a human has to be the one to create the AI, right? Uh, for general intelligence, this is a goal, but in the past five years, there are limited progress. I would say most, almost all the progress is still in this area, right? And this is still a work in progress. Uh, once you have the super intelligence, well, you can think of Skynet and, and, and such, uh, that you have like singularity. That, now that right there, AI would kind of speed up and then have a faster pace than uh, our development. But well, that is like infinity, right? The goal, which we don't know whether it will exist. Even here, still we still struggle to make it because as, as you see in this course, the thing we talk about deep learning is that, is it just like a shy, a very bright shy that he can read, he can remember. But if you want him to generalize the knowledge from what he read, you need to have a way to, be, to, make, it, to make him be able to uh, apply the knowledge. Right? If he just read just one book, even like overfitting would occur. And yeah, that's the problem with the narrow intelligence, right? So, so yeah, so we will talk about deep learning as the method that we would, with which we will perform the artificial narrow intelligence. Um, deep learning can come about right now because of the uh, of these enablers. Right? These are the enablers of the adoption of AI. Let me check if I got this slide right. Sorry. Uh, yes. Sometimes you just wonder whether you have the right one. Okay. I got too many versions of this slide, which make me kind of not sure whether I got it right or not. Right. Uh, so here, these are the enablers of having, why, why now? Why now? Why having the, the development of AI right now? Um, there are basically three factors that uh, enable AI development, uh, and, uh, and part of that is uh, about these three. Right? The first one is a big data, right? big data revolution, that we have a better way to store data and process data. Uh, and we have the digital version of a lot of data. Um, we have better way to acquire data. Okay? Second one is the better way to compute. Right, we have the GPU computation, um, and we have the algorithm. Right, we have the algorithmic uh, progress that allows us to compute more efficiently, to to make computer learn more effectively. And oops, sorry, let me pick this one up. Hello, Cap. Sorry. All right, uh, yeah, because of these three. So let's take a look at each of these as factors that enable the development of AI. Right. First, we have data. We know that uh, the word data is the new oil because it has values, right? Uh, with the invention of internet, we create the way that human can share information. We are, we are now at the, the age that the machine can share information by themselves we have already passed the age that human can share, can freely share information with one another, which create a large bulk of information. Sometimes these data, uh, unfortunately, limited to just uh, some people, to just a company. But you, you know that they exist right now. And because of this revolution, um, we now have like a, a larger size of data that are available. And and luckily, some of these companies also share the data through the default data platform that we can use for the study. Next 
era would be the interaction between machine and machine. And that will create much more detailed data there and would, which would allow us to create a lot more automatic system, which will work as, you know, I would say, the foundation of a lot of invention uh, from this point on, right? So we kind of trying to find insight in the data out to make use of them. So what are the insights? We talk, when we talk about big data and machine learning, right? we talk about the usage of data, we can use the, that to perform something like descriptive analytics, right? to show what happened right now. We can create the predictive analytics that try to predict what will happen next, or prescriptive analytics, which will make recommendation on the, uh, on the, on the action that need to be taken. So for, for these trees, uh, the underlying basic model that play a, play a larger part in allowing these data to, to work, as particularly the, the, the latter two here is the machine learning. Right? The core concept of machine learning is quite old, actually. Dated back, I would say, 100 years ago. Right? That, uh, actually, even longer than that. Uh, People try, actually, it's not just in this few years that people talk about machine learning. Science, uh, part of the scientific development has already focused on the, um, on the, uh, on the improvement of, or on the understanding of mathematical construct and on, on its application. Uh, I would say just because of in the past um, 40 years, with the development of computers, right? Starting from very slow computer to right now computer working together, right? We have a better ability to compute and, and that make us able to utilize the algorithm, utilize the way to compute um, much better on that, right? So the technique of machine learning is to, which is like the, the umbrella of deep learning, uh, is a way that you allow computer to learn from data, right? To, to learn the path pattern from data and uh, which you can see that all around you like from the Google search from Facebook tagging or photo tagging email spam detection in games in chatbot in many other things okay uh, in machine learning um, when we create a machine learning model we try to make the model learn from data right so let's say it's like we have a model which uh, is a function that will learn from feature X and then try to predict feature Y, uh, which it will need to learn the function to map the HX function that map from X to Y. We will talk about this in a formal terms in the basic of machine learning tasks. And that I will introduce you the concept of the maximum likelihood estimation and maximum a posteriori, uh, which is the MLE and map which is really classic machine learning topics uh, used since back then, like HMM and hardware model, the classical model. And we'll talk about that later on. Okay, so in this machine learning model, right, we try to learn the function HX. Um, the model itself is defined uh, by a set of parameters. Uh, we have a set of parameters, and then we need to find the best parameters that will allow us to um, adjust the model to fit the data, okay? And to do that, you need to kind of optimize this cost function. Cost function is the function that would define as cost, right? Maybe the difference between the predicted and the actual um, to do that. So, so this is the machine learning model. In the machine learning, um, there are different ways to learn, okay? Like you can create a model to do a supervised learning, learning from example, the name supervised or uh, unsupervised learning, uh, learning without supervised supervision. So the unsupervised learning is like the clustering algorithm, trying to find the structure in the data. Uh, think about supervised learning as looking at dog and cat, and then you try to guess whether this is cat or dog. For the unsupervised learning, think about when you go through uh, to see different leaf, and then you try to find the leaf and the leaf that similar to one another so that it might come from the same tree. So this, that's unsupervised learning, okay? So the difference would be classification, classifying, prediction with some types of label, with some types of, uh, of the, the thing to teach, 
to the system, right? And, and I don't like to put it as label because it doesn't have to be label all the time. It can be another data, right, in supervised learning. It can be um, the whole thing itself to make it learn the, the structure, uh, given that you have the, the, the thing that uh, you kind of specified it must learn. Right? So you need to have like learning from example, think about it, thing like that. Um, uh, for second one, this will be learning the structure, right? So this is like uh, looking at things and think whether they are similar to one another or not. Uh, they, if they are similar, then it should be together. If not, then they should be in, in different groups. So that is unsupervised learning. The idea is to find the structure. So any method that try to find the structure, it would belong to this unsupervised learning approach. And the last one is the re Actually, there are hybrid between supervised and unsupervised, which I did not talk about, like the same supervised and others, so hybrid between them. Uh, but let's put it in a simple way, this, in this way. Uh, the last one is the reinforcement learning. Okay? Reinforcement learning is the learning technique that you try to make the system learn, but not from examples, but from trial and errors from the environment. Okay, you just give them the scope, the simulation, the environment, and let the system learn uh, what to react, what to do from that environment. All right, so let's see each of that. Okay, for the supervised learning, you must have input pairing with output. And then you try to make the system learn uh, from the pair of input and output. Okay, like given the sensor or what sensors as and the camera and input, and then you try to uh, let it uh, find the appropriate movement, like the way to uh, drive in the self-driving car. Right? And the second one, like uh, giving search terms, then let the algorithm predict uh, what person, to, uh, what types of data to look for. Right. So this is the supervised learning. Um, so this is all about learning mapping between input and output, okay? Uh, so it's like you have input, kind of let the model predict what type of label it should be, okay? Example of this one would be this. Well, I really like the research in deep learning because they use a lot of cat <laughs> dog images, right? Uh, so like this one, the classification. So in classification, maybe I would just use my cat to, to make uh, the classification task as well. Uh, in this, you need to classify like this is a cat, right? This is classification, having image and know that this is a cat. Uh, if you have both classification and localization, uh, this is like, oh, sorry. Oh yeah, this one. Uh, so you have like uh, localization, mean that finding the bounding box and this is a cat. Uh, for multiple objects, you can do the object detection, detecting uh, the objects that are there. Or you can perform segmentation, instant segmentation. These are all the valid application. And, and actually, right now, you can thought of this technique, these methods as already solved, uh, already solved uh, problems, mostly, right? especially for the object detection. Right? So you, can, you know that face detection right now is not hard at all. Back then, when I, I started working on AI, like in 2000, um, doing something like this, object detection, is really uh, difficult because you need to do the, uh, a lot of computer vision pre-processing in order to perform recognition using a uh, simple technique like uh, pattern matching and, and others. Okay, so with deep learning, this can be done uh, quite automatically with algorithm. For supervised learning, what you need is to have a good label. So you need to have a lot of manually label data. And uh, you need to know what to predict. Right? So this is very important things because if you use uh, the wrong thing to predict, then you will not answer to a business problem. Um, for, for the task like predicting a dog and cat, predicting uh, something like this, this might not be critical. But if the task is to like count the number of uh, or detect the uh, detect the, the uh, defect in the production batch, that will be critical there, right? So we need to have like what, decide what to predict and then uh, require business people to identify appropriate input to, to use as input. If done right, then we have like a reliable AI. You know, for example, something like Schoen prediction. 
uh, you can use input to predict uh, whether uh, which user will churn, maybe from the pattern that they play the games earlier. You can use that to predict whether this, uh, whether this uh, user will come back or not. Or from this, once he lose, whether you just forget, and not don't play at all. So, so churn prediction is is uh, a thing that can be done. Right? Uh, and, and to do that, we need to gather the data like from this the blue area and then predict that this would happen. This is a churn event, churn event, active event, active event. And from that, we can use the data gathered through this um, process to create a model, okay? Uh, um, we can perform the risk scoring, right? This is uh, done in, uh, in the bank. Right? They have to train, use the data set to train and classify, uh, to train the model uh, to make scoring uh, of uh, whether this customer has a risky customer or not risky customer. And then you can use the data split to test and to test whether uh, it, it is done right. So all this, to do this, you need to have like a data set with label that for risk would be whether this um, customer at the end pay all the debt or not paying the debt, right? So we, we, with those data, we can then uh, use them to train the model, to assess like the likelihood of, um, the likelihood of um, getting into the problem there. Okay, that's the supervised learning, right? Unsupervised learning. Right. We let the model learn from uh, learn from the data in the, the input data. We did not specify any types of correct output, and the model have to learn from the pattern, find the structure, and then once it's, and then and then the result would be the structure, like the cluster, the dendrogram, or whatever structure a graph. Right. So think about this as a way that you create the structure from the messy data. So it can be different types of structure. Um, what right now I see mostly uh, in terms of unsupervised learning, uh, you can see the technique that perform clustering like k-means, which is very easy. You have uh, hierarchical clustering, creating a dendrogram. Also discover the structure from bottom up. But it can be graph, right? You can use uh, the, 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 mod, the, the model to find the data that are close together and create a graph. And from the graph, you can perform something like recommendation. Okay, so unsupervised learning in itself has a lot of merit because you don't really need to have bias in terms of labels. You can just let the system learn from specified data so that you can find the, the grouping, the structure inside. And from there, you can make use of those structure later on. For example, if you get the knowledge graph from, from the uh, e-commerce, you can create uh, the thing uh, like the chatbot for uh, the chatbot for um, for the chatbot that understand the what should I call them? It should be semantic, right? That understand the semantic of the products. That it, it understand the that color mean color. It understand that um, if we talk about the shirt with color, then these are the the wallet semantics. So, so that can be done by creating something like that. So, and you can think of, of, of that uh, knowledge as uh, a chunk of knowledge that we humans use almost all, all every time, right? or almost every day. Uh, so unsupervised learning itself is very close to how humans learn because we detect the label and then we learn from that. And we also, but we also did the supervised learning as well. So let's take a look at application. Now like you can perform document grouping. Right, or uh, doing topic model. And, and we will take a look at that, uh, and, and actually a post, I think. Um, topic model, we will talk about that, but in the terms of um, autoencoder, right, because we talk about only deep learning. Topic model in, in text mining itself, when, when we talk about that, you can, we can think about like SL, LSA, about um, SVD, about LDA, the Latin Declare Allocation. Uh, but for the deep learning, let's talk about it in terms of learning representation about autoencoding, autoencoder, and and we talk about embedding as well at the end of this, uh, of this class. Well, it's a little bit repetitive with the text mining there. Okay, but this is the unsupervised learning. Oh, I forgot. Do you have any 
Does anyone have any comment coming up? No, right? Sorry, I may not see that. Let me let me find the chat in the bit. Okay, right. So you know what? If if I if I did not close the chat interface and open it and then make presentation, thing is, uh, I would not know that you type in the question because it will not kind of flashing up. But if I close that interface and you you kind of send me chat here, I will know right? because it will pop up and and yeah, that's better. Right, and this is the fun one, <laughs> uh, the fun one to uh, to allow the the deep learning to learn, but not from example, uh, from the environment. Right? To do that, well, you need to have environment that define a set of state, actions, and reward. And the model can be trained uh, based on the action that it takes and the, the reward that it got. That means you need to have a realistic simulation in order to create the reinforcement learning. Okay, like given a stock price and let uh, the bot decide whether to buy or to sell, uh, and then the bot will make decision to optimize the reward, to learn by itself. Right? Or my, I have a thesis uh, that one of my students did uh, last year. It, that was on uh, that was on speech synthesis. So what I the, the topic is to synthesize speech so that it is close to uh, actually to train the model so that when you talk with, with the model, it can reverse from acoustic to articulatory position, like the, the position of tongue and, 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 and jaw and, and otters. Um, but we don't have data, but we have the model that can generate the, the, the speech uh, in that regard. Like we give it the position and then it will generate the voice. So what we did back then was to create environment that um, perform something like this, uh, simulate the input and take a look at the output and use the error to drive, learn, to learn the network. Right? So that the, the network will learn uh, is best there. All right, so uh, that, that was the thesis that my student did uh, last semester. So for this one, let's take a look at this one. This one is a fun one. Uh, so you can uh, create this Atari game. So right? you know this game, right? You have to keep the ball uh, bouncing and not falling off. Uh, and then clear all the level here. So let's take a look at this video a while. There's no domain knowledge, like that. There's no um, explicit specification. So the first 10 minutes of training, and the movement is quite random. So it kind of lost a lot. If it lost, it got penalized, and then we got penalized. If it uh, scored, it, it got reward. Okay, and the decision is like whether it will go left or right. After two hours. Right, so yeah. You can try this actually with other games. Like I think there's people who do this with StarCraft and with other games that it allow the um, computer interface to visit directly. Right, this is Atari games. All right, and this is for 240 minutes and it got the strategy. It learned the strategy the best way that it can dig out, uh, clear the level as fast as possible. As so you can see, it's quite a feat that it can learn um, by itself without having to explicitly tell the strategy. It learned the strategy to, to do that. I, I think there's a medium on, on this topic. If you want to try it, you can just try that. It's quite fun. This is a little bit harder. This is a running bot to create a deep learning model that control the bot movement. Come on. Don't show, show here. Why? Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So here. Um, 
the bot has lots of degree of freedoms. Degree of freedom means that it needs to, to think about the tilt, the action, whether it would jump up or down uh, and, and alters. Uh, oh, right. So it needs to try a lot, but you know, you can see that how can we program, right? The system to perform like this one. This is quite difficult if you want to make an explicit programming. The way that it that uh, he, the researchers that uh, try to do this is to let the bot learn uh, from the given environment. That include the available action. That include the foot, right? That it can learn uh, how to do. And you can see that this is quite uh, uh, difficult movement with uh, explicit programming. So. Yeah, this is the thing, right? Okay, um, with that, there are lots of models that you can choose from to do specific tasks. The thing that we talk about here is this part, the deep learning part, which is here, okay? Um, and the neural network, right? All the models are still valid, though I will not cover them in this, in this class. Um, you can, take the data mining and authors um, to, to, take, to take a look at different algorithms. All right, let's take a look at this, um, uh, this AlphaGo network. Uh, the AlphaGo network composes of the um, policy network from different um, way of training. Like you have policy network, trended from uh, the expert playing the previous games and this is supervised learning, which can be used to assess which position that um, the, uh, that the, the computer should choose next. And you have this fast policy network. This is from the uh, supervised learning as well, or from the fast policy. So um, you have like uh, different patterns remembering, right? The, the system has to also remember the patterns to make the, the fast policy. But you also have this, the self-play games that it can, it can self-play itself in the reinforcement learning to find the best way. This is quite, this is quite a, a fun idea. Think about it, you let computer play by itself and then learn the best way to play. Right? This is the reinforcement learning. And also the value network, which is also self-play. Right? So AlphaGo contains these four policy network, which are learned through supervised learning and through reinforcement learning. And particularly for this one, you can see that there are this Monte Carlo tree search, right? That uh, allow the algorithm to uh, find the best way, uh, search for the best way. You can take a look at this algorithm later on as well. But you can see that the, the core of the, the model here comprises of four main network. Right. Uh, and for all of the four, right? For, for, for all of the three techniques that I talk about, deep learning is a foundation of all, the, all of them, right? You can use deep learning to perform a lot of tasks, particularly useful with the unstructured data uh, because the data contains um, redundancy in data. And many times we want to far have a way that summarize patterns from, uh, from those data, um, like image and language, and all, all the time series. And then uh, the deep learning has to uh, kind of learn that uh, from those situations, okay? So think about deep learning, you can think about it this way, that you, we have like knowledge-based system, a rule-based AI, right? Uh, dive down, we have machine learning, which learn from the example. But the problem with machine learning is that you need to have a way to extract pattern, to extract features, right? If any of you who worked with me before, you find that one of the difficulties in machine learning is to find the right variables. Right? Finding the right variables, how to do that? So diving deeper, now we have a way that cre can create representation like in autoencoder or in the representation learning. Machine uh, deep learning utilize this to identify useful representations and then the core deep learning itself. So when we talk about deep learning, we talk about learning representations and, and, and also uh, learning the pattern there. 
So instead of in, in machine learning, which we have, we need to have the hand design features and then machine learning algorithm can do this learning. In the representation learning or in deep learning, we dedicate the task of features and abstraction of features to the model. So the model itself have to learn this out, right? What, what are the use of this technique? For example, we can perform, now this is like a solved task, right? We can perform deep learning for image recognition, right? Um, there's the competition image net, which uh, try to classify image, a million image into categories. And right now, uh, there are a lot of techniques that work with this type of classification. So you can think about image classification tasks as already solved tasks. So it depends on, uh, mostly it depends on how many images that you have and uh, and uh, resources that you have. So you have a lot of varieties of images that would be great, uh, that can be done, right? And uh, and this, uh, for example, the, the model that solved this problem is this ResNet um, from, uh, from Google. Uh, in 2014, it contains a lot of layers, uh, layers of neural network that try to classify that. At the end of this course, you should understand uh, why, why this design mathematically and computationally, right? All right so there are a lot of things, a lot of features here. Uh, how it works when training, uh, so think about it this way. Uh, you have uh, multi layers of network that are learned first, and then you fetch the data into the network. Uh, the network have to learn the patterns, like to, how to detect um, the patterns out, and then uh, in the end, trying to classify them into, uh, into tasks, uh, in, into the categories. At the end, you can see that this is FC, this is CNN, so CovNet, and then this class, you will see why, why designing it this way. So there are uh, things to learn here. And hopefully, maybe you can use this in your thesis. Right? It's quite useful tools. Although um, there are limitations that I want to clear out right now. One thing is that deep learning, uh, deep learning does not equate to actual intelligence, right? So it means that if you want to do science, like if I want to understand why humans speak this way. Doing deep learning will not help you there right? because of, of how the how speech generate from, uh, would generate from the uh, speech apparatus. Deep learning would not help you there. Now, deep learning would allow you to map from the data to the data. Uh, it can map the pattern. It can perform classification, but it has a limitations in discover the scientific topics about itself. You will see a lot of hype coming out. It can write its own code and whatever, but to make it discover new things, to make it discover science, this is still challenging. That uh, in some area is work like in drug discovery, in protein folding, in biology, that is, that is okay to a certain extent because it allows you to compute. But in human cognition, like in seeing, in um, speaking, these are still the hard tasks, or in, in just uh, this, uh, discern the scene, these are still hard tasks that need to be resolved later on. Right, so if you want to do, if you want to use it to do the, get the job done uh, with the data, then it's fine, it's good, right? But if you uh, want to uh, create like computational model of something, then it, it might not help that. <laughs> okay. Now let's take a look at how the deep learning helps in machine perception. Uh, for the image data, we can use deep learning to perform image detection. We can use deep learning to interpret it, interpret the audio, identify speakers. We can use it to edit, interpret text and do the translation classifications. Okay. I taught this class last semester, the deep learning for text, uh, using, uh, actually it's not just deep learning, it's auto text mining technique as well, like pattern matching, text cleaning and, and authors. Um, but the deep learning play a major role in natural language. Like you can use it to learn the similarity between words that make it know that Paris and London are similar to, uh, to one another if we talk in terms of the country, right? Uh, 
and like he himself associated with another, we will try this for sure. And we would also create the INN to do something like uh, language generation as well. Okay, so deep learning work with text allow, allow to create a, a representation that is meaningful, that are meaningful for text and perform tasks that are very difficult back then like machine translation that if you want to translate from one language to another language uh, in the old day you need to create a, something like the rule based model uh, right now we can train the model and then let it learn what type of rule should be there uh, so we talk about this as well the attention architecture and the transformer architecture uh, there are like new invention of deep, le deep learning almost every month right now so I cannot cover all of the cool things here, um, but I will leave that to you, right? Uh, for, for the class, and we have the research presentation that you have to do it about at the end of the semester. Um, so, and, and, and for that, you need to choose which one you like to talk about uh, in the research paper. Uh, think about it as the pre-thesis, right? Pre-thesis, which you have to do it anyway. Suppose that you do thesis in this regard. Okay, you can use deep learning in combination with other deep learning like CNN with RNN to do some cool thing like this. You can use it to interpret the scene and then generate the text. But to do so, you need to have text, uh, you need to have image and text pair up with one another, right? You need to have a lot of them actually, like the degree of 100,000 to millions of them in order to train a model like this one. And you need to have a very powerful computer to do this, to do so. Um, I will put your computer to work <laughs> in this class a bit, sure, for sure, that you have to do the, uh, write some uh, of the learning tasks. Uh, some of them you have to write starting from scratch, uh, but I will try to uh, be um, uh, generous, <laughs> be kind. And so some of that in the letter, letter architecture, we will use the, use Keras to do the job, uh, the, the, the platform to do the job rather than write it by yourself. But you, you have to try that a bit at first. Okay. Uh, so, so this is like from text, image to text, you can from, to do conversely, converse from, in, uh, in, from the text to image, right? Uh, from the description, converse back to the image. This is quite cool, right? Think about it, just write some description there and then you get the image out. But to do that, you need to have, again, in reverse. I have a project this year for the undergrad years. I asked them to gather the online data, right, and the uh, product data, image product data or products. And, uh, um, what is this? and the title, right, title of the products. And yeah, I'm going to do this. <laughs> it will be fun, right, to let it learn, maybe just explain it, have seeing image and explain it in, in, in the text. Okay, but we will, we will take a look at the, the insight of, of the algorithm here. Right, um, right now, uh, luckily, um, there are open source technology that are available to use. Uh, let me see. Okay, okay, got the right one. Okay, there are readily technology that can be used, uh, like the TensorFlow, uh, which is from Google, uh, and the PyTorch from Facebook. Um, for, for, for me, I, I, I'm okay with PyTorch and, and, and TensorFlow and Keras, but I find that actually, um, actually PyTorch is okay, but a lot of examples, you want to learn it by yourself or the starter, I, I would go to TensorFlow and Keras. So in this, in this class, we would use these two, right? TensorFlow and Keras to, to do the job for the assignment two, three, four, and five. Now you kind of panic. How come there are so many assignments? Three, four, and five. Assignment one, you don't have to use them. Uh, you must not uh, use them. Uh, you have to write yourself. So that'd be fun. Now come, let's come to here. The learning outcome for this course. Right? So the, the, those are introduction. Learning outcome for this course. Why learning this course? Uh, learning this course and what you will get from this course will be you will understand the mathematical foundation, the formulation of the deep neural network. That will allow you to understand the further architecture of the deep learning. This is very important. Writing code in deep learning is not that difficult. You can write the CRM neural network very easily. 
just a few lines of code, but do you understand them? Can you apply them further? Like suppose that I got this this question from from uh, the company that they they have this ID card, and they have the image that is part of the ID card. They want to mesh them together. How would we do that? If we use the Amis neural network, there need to be certain modification of the structure. What would you do? Think about that. Right. Uh, so understanding this mathematical foundation would allow you to think further on what should be done. Right. And we will implement some of the algorithm to try them out. And you should aware of the research in deep learning. So, and the textbook we will use, of course, must come from Professor Goodfellow. <laughs> right. For Ian Goodfellow, uh, this is the deep learning. Um, it is quite difficult to read. All right. But it is quite thorough. And if you, un but I, I would say to understand the textbook, you need to uh, understand the basic. Uh, you need to be patient and try to lead it slowly. Think about the real thing and read it slowly. And then you, you do kind of uh, shine the light on you on, on what are uh, uh, the core mechanism of deep learning itself. So this is the reference that I use in order to create this lecture. Uh, all right. Uh, and you can find lots of lots of tutorial online, but most of those tutorial will just it will be just well type in this code, it will work like this, then yeah, ta da, you got the result. <laughs> so most of the tutorial works like that, and and some of my uh, demonstration I will also did something like that as well. You see, but uh, before that, you need to understand the, the core concept first. Now these are the topics that I will review uh, and that I will use in this semester. So we'll start off this time as an introduction to deep learning. Next, I will review the linear algebra, uh, including something like uh, matrix vectors, uh, eigenvectors, and uh, uh, probability and information theory. Right. Last year, these are two lectures, but I, I'm, I'm going to I, I'm going to combine them into just one so that we do not spend too much time on review itself. Right. So this these are uh, will be the next week. And then, this, this is fun, gradient-based optimization. You will write the optimization by yourself without using anything. Just writing code from scratch with linear algebra. It will be fun. Uh, so we we'll learn about gradient-based optimization. We will learn about MLE and, and MAP right, in the basic concept of machine learning. Right? Mathematical set. So I'm not going to just throw you with the scikit-learn here, no. Uh, you, I don't think I will use scikit-learn or any of this. Uh, what we will use here is what we we'll take a look at here is mathematical of mathematical concept of machine learning. So you see what is bias, what is variance in mathematical terms. What are what are the MLE and MAP criterion in learning variables? What are the regularization of the model in mathematical terms? So we will take a look at that here. The basic concept of machine learning. Afterward, right, we we'll look at the architecture, the deep architecture and shallow architecture here, uh, back propagation algorithm as well, and then the uh, regularization of the deep learning, which is quite important, right? Because you want, don't want, you don't want deep learning to be overfitting. Regularization is one of the key. You take a look at the GAN uh, a bit here, but you can choose it to, to present in the research as well. I will talk about the data augmentation, uh, data manipulation that allow us to regularize the network. Regularize means Reducing overfitting, reducing, yeah, overfitting, right? And then the optimization, right? So the option to do optimization, there are like basic stochastic gradient descent, which you have to implement up there. Um, but you can also opt to use more complicated one with momentum with authors, and then this, this is optimization. Although I would say that after the sec after the, the third one, we will use the library to do the, the deep learning. But the first one we would write it ourselves. Okay, and then uh, CNN uh, on the twenty eighth. Uh, there no, there's no class in October fifth uh, during the midterm, right? and October twelfth we we'll talk about RNN. We we'll do the language generation there, and autoencoder. Right? Looking at autoencoder and looking at the way to represent the text, uh, text representation, 
in manual way and using the, the system to learn. And that thing will take a look at the uh, backward idea and the skip gram idea to, to do the embedding. And then after that, we will take a look at uh, different advanced architectures. Uh, right now, I can think of attention, which is easy to show. Maybe transformer, maybe say a mixed neural net, something like those. Right? We, we will take a look at that later. You can request here. And the last one, <laughs> this one I'm not sure <laughs> uh, whether it will scare you guys off or, or not. Uh, we, well, uh, because we talk about sequence models so far, so I figure it might be nice to see the learning work with different types of data set. Maybe start with speech data set. Actually, I will just pick up uh, some of the uh, tutorial online and try to prepare that. Uh, in, in the form of set, I have lectures on speech processing, which I taught two years ago, probably. Um, and then we'll kind of mix them up with the, uh, the neural network. And then well, we'll learn about doing speech precognition uh, using the neural network here. Right, on on the uh, at the beginning of November, and then that after that that will be your jobs right in research presentation two times, and finally final presentation uh, final examination at the end. Uh, so these are the topics that I will cover in this class. Right? It will not it, it will mostly about mathematical foundation, and then after we understand mathematical foundation, we will take a look at parameters, options in Keras that allow us to use those. Right, so these are the work and the scoring of this class. Uh, we, I, I, I did not put in the midterm exam. We do not have a midterm exam. We have only final exam, 30%. Uh, research presentation is 20. Most of the score comes from the assignment here, 50% assignment. Uh, so in each assignment, so I will ask you to do this uh, to perform gradient-based optimization um, from scratch and do the, uh, the shallow and forward, uh, feed forward propagation um, to do convolutional network and recurrent neural network and then the advanced architecture. That's one of that which you can choose which one do you want to work with um, to do the job, right? Okay, so this is about it. Um, the work to do in this uh, class, you have five assignments, one paper presentation, and one exam. All right, that's it. Any questions that you would like to ask uh, about the class itself or about the topics, or about the future of the fields, whatever. Anything you want to discuss here? You can just open the microphone and, and let's talk. Or you can type uh, in chat, and I will answer it from the chat. Hello, Let me stop. Hello John. Hello. Can you yes. hear me? Yes. Ajahn, I wanted to ask you: uh, Could you please share a recording, like the of this class, with us? Sure. Um, my because, you know, in things we want to review. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't worry about that. Uh, my practice um, is always to share. So. Um, after the class, um, I will have uh, give me a few days, right? Uh, I will put, uh, I will use, uh, I will kind of edit it first, and then usually I'll post it to uh, to YouTube, and then share with you guys uh, into the the Facebook group. So just join the Facebook group, and you should be fine. I will upload the content later. Okay, on. Ajahn. All right. Ajahn, which group? Master sixty, right? Um, the Again, master sixty. Which group? Um, is it like the one? All right. Let me find it and then put it here as well. Ask me. I and Ajahn, this slide will also be available, right? My this slide will also be available, right? Yes. This uh, this slide is in the group. Um. Yeah. Let me. Put okay. it there. Right. Your microphone has certain like flickering noise. <laughs> right, let me. It here. Sorry. <laughs> that's, that's fine. But it has to, to recognize a lot of words that you said, but it's really fine. Just speak slowly. Uh huh. Uh, there's one uh, question. Uh, yes, yes. Please. Would, could you please suggest some resources like we could make use of? Some uh, resources, resources for uh, computing or, or material? Like for materials, Ajahn. Computing as well, like 
something that would help us with our assignments and um, exams All right. and yeah. Uh, for the computing, uh, for the computing, mostly you can use CPU. So if you use the uh, the laptop, it should be fine. Actually, I, I I even think that if you use a collab, it should be fine in running the lab here. It would, be, it would take a bit longer in, in, in training model because training deep learning uh, will be faster if you use GPU, but without that, it's still fine. Right? Uh, for materials, right? Uh, materials. And, and I don't know. I think the book itself is available. Available online. There are a lot of materials, good material in deep learning, right? like from MIT uh, and and other resources. Uh, for example, this one. This is from Professor Goodfellow. I think it's available online as well. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. This this should be okay. Yeah, deep learning book. <laughs> right hand shot. Yeah. Well, I bought the, the physical format. <laughs> yeah, this one. I like to buy a book. Yeah. But don't have to buy it, right? The link that I gave you here will direct you to the resource for students that want to learn this book. Right. Uh, you can take a look at that. Although I did not use the lectures from from the from this source, I had to, I did that myself and, and pulling it from many other sources. So the lectures would not be like the lecture provided in the in the site. But yeah, you can get the the book content from from here. Yeah, should be okay. Yeah? Um, uh, for the programming resources, I think you can just search. There are plenty of them. Medium, uh, to what other science and authors, but uh, use Google. <laughs> Help you a lot there. Just it's pull a lot of resources together. Um, for me, I, I find that if you get the right keyword, uh, like if you kind of understand, try to understand the concept, but then you want to, to, to know how that uh, task is done you can just use the keyword like you you want to know how to use gru to do the job you can just search gru and the job you can find example there and so not that difficult but you need to understand the concept first in order to find the right keyword for the search so so the link is like the one that i gave you mm -hmm. this is a pdf of this book uh, so it's only html Right, it's only HTML, but you can use it uh, and then look at uh, the the book without buying. So it's quite good already. Right, so you don't have to buy; you can use this. And look, but there's no PDF, no PDF format, because cost the contract with the, the printing company. But well, in any case, if you want to have the PDF or digital version, you can buy it from Amazon from the Kindle. Actually, I bought the digital format from Kindle, and I also have the physical format here. <laughs> Being a giant, have to have a lot of resources; otherwise, you'll not be able to get like pictures from 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 these things. Okay, and your friend asks, "Can you show me more example of deep learning versus ordinary ML?" Um, comparing between the two, it doesn't mean that deep learning is better than ordinary ML. In a lot of in a lot of cases, I still use gradient boost tree. I still use random forest SVM, right? If it can perform the task, about right. But what types of problems that deep learning will shine? Now, I would think about the the data that are unstructured. Whenever you have redundant and unstructured data the usual machine learning will find it difficult to work because you need to have the features, the right features to work. But for deep learning, it can perform the task very well because it will have to learn the representation anyway. You will see it 
when I use, uh, in, I think in the feed forward lecture, that when you use the neural network to do this job, it can perform to a certain extent, but well, comparing to um, like uh, SVM, comparing to uh, Zen3, comparing to the, uh, the, the gradient boost tree, um, those might be comparable. So why use deep learning there? So it doesn't make sense if you have tabular data. But once you have unstructured data, time series data, text, image, speech, video, right? You have the data that are quite complex, like sequence of block. You want system that can filter through and find the right feature out. And, and this will make uh, the, the technique like this one uh, better than those, okay? Right? Any, oh, oh I, I forgot to, I forgot to share, sorry, sorry. I forgot to share that. That's why I told you that you should. You should tell me that I, I opened the website, but I did not show you the website. Here, this one. Right, from Professor Goodfellow. Uh, from the authors of the book, right? Uh, yeah, and it contains this, uh, all of the text here, linear algebra. And the forward network. But this paper, this, this book is good in um, mathematical construct, right? If you read carefully on this, it will kind of allow you to understand lots of things. But what is lacking is implementation. It doesn't have implementation at all. That means that implementation has to come from other sources. And mostly I have to uh, find other sources to use in order to create a computation of these things, right? Right, uh, have, do you have any other questions? If you have questions, feel free to post to the group. Um, I, if I can, I will answer the question as soon as possible. As soon as I see the questions, I will answer the questions, right? Okay, if, um, so how many of you are there? Oh, 27, really? If, uh, uh, well, let, let's see if, um, if which, which of you would register to the class or put it this way, if uh, there are more people, I, may, I might need to adjust the schedule here a bit. Um, uh, let, let's see, let's see. I, I think I can accommodate that uh, somehow, maybe extend the presentation at the end a bit further so that we have like not just two and but but uh, three because for two here well i expect to have like four six twelve uh, it can accommodate about 24 presentation to 18 to 24 presentation but if i got another uh like research presentation number three about here and extend the final exam a bit one week later on. That might work. Let's see how many of you register to the class then we can decide that later on. Um, that's a comment coming up. So we will learn via Zoom except for project presentation and exam. Yes, that's correct. For the project presentation and the exam, let's wait and see if the countries can, uh, if uh, we have, uh, if we still in this situation, which is a stagnant, <laughs> but yeah, uh, if, if we still at the zero cases and or not, or if the case is on the rise, then we have to reverse to the online. But let's let's put it in this way first, right? So the other things we can decide later. Okay. Any question further? All right. So see you guys next week then. Have a good night. And hope you find it useful for at least this lecture uh, on the application of deep learning. I'm I'm still working on another another 
um, lectures uh, to teach deep learning to non-technical people, <laughs> that's very really difficult. Uh, and the topic that I have to teach on that is introduction to deep learning, just like this one. What I have to teach in such a way that uh, people without um, backgrounds in machine learning and, and such need to understand. And that is very really difficult. Right? Okay, good night, everyone. Uh, see you next week, um, 6 p.m. Right, Monday. Bye.